Harriet Friedman, Professor, Emer uh, Professor Emerita of Sociology, Geography, and Planning at the University of Toronto, author of many, many classic papers in food systems and agrarian studies, co-founder with Philip McMichael of the Food Regime Analysis. She's had a wide range of collaboration over the course of her career, including with ISTAD, with CIRAD most recently, and, and a long-standing uh, central figure in the Toronto Food Policy Council, which is a really important uh, initiative that sort of brings research to bear on, on uh, municipal policy issues in Toronto. And in 2011, received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Canadian Association of Food Studies. Um, yeah, so in my few minutes, um, I'm going to try to raise questions um, at a kind of middle scale of, of transition to something new that I think is networked, uh, artisanal, probably um, simple commodity production or, or uh, self-employed enterprises, I don't know. But we're trying to move in that direction, I think, and we need to think about the incremental changes that can lead to shifts in institutions that determine the relative prices of things. So right now, the relative prices mean that farmers ha need higher prices, at the way things are, and low-income consumers need lower prices, and a whole range of critiques emerge from this dilemma. I want to start with uh, the, the frequently used phrase in the food sovereignty literature that, um, and beyond it, too, that food should not be a commodity or should not be just a commodity. And I want to suggest following Olivier's, uh, par a parallel to Olivier's comment this morning, that we're in a second generation definition of commodity. Commodity in its first generation definition, which I need, think we need to hold on to, is production for sale. And surely that's going to continue, like now and in the future. The question is at what price, what institutions determine the price. Uh, the second generation definition of commodity is that it's one of those proletarian crops. It's the large scale industrial crops as opposed to something else, all kinds of other things, whether they're raspberries or you know, mixed farming uh, systems that are sold in uh, much more traceable, uh, well, the old sense of traceable from the organics movement, much more networked ways. Um, so. What I want to suggest is that we need to think about markets as bioculturally embedded, and the incremental changes can be evaluated according to uh, this kind of general criteria. That markets are not natural, but the outcome of specific institutions, following Polanyi and others. Food regimes and other approaches help to recognize the legacies of institutions, which have arisen layer on layer into a complex present. Mostly, They've created the kind of markets congenial to the capitalist suppression of natural specificities of each place and the cultural specificities. These specificities are both biological and cultural, and the term for that, I'm following my, my colleague Lauren Baker in Toronto, Toronto Food Policy Council, who has taken from Victor Toledo in Mexico, the term biocultural. I think it's a useful one I want to propose uh, be adopted more widely. Is it possible then to build markets that enhance biocultural diversity? And can these markets combine modern equalities and formal science, ways along lines perhaps that Jack's talking about, with ancient wisdom about living with the earth? What are often called social movements uh, to change the food system, I think, need are, are complicated because they're also movements to act, well, there's practices, there's a set of disparate practices, Henry's exactly right, that are trying to change aspects of the food system to cope with uh, dysfunctional aspects of the food system. Most experiences of social movements since the rise of capitalism have made claims against powerful states, and of course, that's how Via Campesina started, or capitalist organizations, unions, anti-colonial, anti-poverty, anti-patriarchal, anti anti-racist movements, uh, for the most part, challenge and make claims for uh, different laws, different practices, uh, different distribution. But the food system is more comprehensive and fundamental. It is also that, but it also means to change everything about how people live and reproduce family, community, and social relationships, and how we get food in relation to all the other ways that we inhabit the earth. 
as, as Paul said this morning, uh, food sovereignty in its broadest sense is the only alternative that's put out now to capitalism. And I'll just say to engage with Henry a bit that the experimental and open practices that now go under the banner of food sovereignty are usefully thought of in contrast to the history of social movements and the efforts to determine a correct line, the efforts to determine what is right and to uh, design hierarchical systems and control them centrally. Uh, these are experiments in transforming the food system from the ground out, I would say, rather than the ground up, and piece by piece. Um, I'd love to talk about John Bellamy Foster and how William Morris and Marx were really closer together in envisioning what socialism might look like uh, than we often imagine, and that that's what this is about. But the question goes deeper than the economist's idea of getting prices right. Um, we have to um, understand that the perverse incentives that are created for farmers to produce in unecological ways and for people to eat either bad food of the industrial system or nutrient enhanced commodities, all of which become profit opportunities for capital, that we need to exit these dilemmas and figure out how to focus on new institutions to embed markets bioculturally. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I wrote it so I could do it really fast. But <laughs> basically, the idea is that we have to multiply income streams to farmers and, and support the agroecological ways that farmers reduce their costs. So participation, going back to Henry in a positive way here, in the 1970s, Henry introduced the idea of commoditization, which was the idea that selling in markets was a very different thing and a very much more autonomous way of participating in capitalism than being caught in input markets to have to pay for means of production or to pay for labor. That's what gets people into debt, et cetera, which I think is the, the main dependence of our system at the moment. Uh, the most important thing is to then be able to think about what institutions, in particular in relation to property, and the idea that, th that changes must happen at a landscape level. You cannot restore the integrity of a stream that runs through one farm. It has to go through all the farms in relation to the quality of the forests um, and all the uses of the farms and of the towns. So we have to shift from perverse subsidies to sustainable ones. and. Um, each of these is complicated and may be one step in a direction that will change or even be abandoned eventually. It's the nature of experimental piece by piece change, is that we do the best we can, we evaluate it and move on. And I'm saying that this way of thinking about institutions gives us a way to evaluate it. And in particular, the conceptual approach that was introduced by Bina this morning, by Eleanor Ostrom, the idea of a protected commons of Jack now for seeds, uh, is a way of building on the actual practices of sharing that happen even in the North, to use land collectively, to share machines, to share um, all kinds of things, and to build these new kinds of markets piecemeal. I have to end. Um, I just want to say that commons and cuisines are specific biocultural assemblages, that commonly cultivated landscapes and evolving cuisines draw both on ancient knowledge and diasporic creations. They're not just about people in one place. To make markets serve commons and cuisines in each place and in their linkages to one another within the encompassing ethnosphere and biosphere is the goal that can guide our judgments, our discernment about the partial efforts that we make to consciously create new institutions. Thank you. Thank you.